Hello everybody, it's me Anirudh back again with yet another video. So uh, if you remember, uh, I've told in the previous video that we are going to get into dive into the actual hacking part in this video, but we are not. So there are a lot more things we, you guys need to know before we actually dive in to hacking. And I by hacking I mean actual hacking. So uh, I I know I have not been uploading for a while now because I was on a little vacation to my uh, at my aunt's house. So not don't dive into a, a, too much of my personal life and we are pretty close to 50 subscribers. So if you could just check if you're subscribed that would make my day. And please subscribe. Just don't check if you're subscribed. If you're not, please do. It would make my day a lot happier. So uh, these are five phases of penetration testing. I'm your instructor Anirudh Dili. So what we've learned, uh, learned so far, uh, what we've learned so far is what is Linux, how to use Linux, basic Linux command and setting up our virtual hacking lab. We only set up our Kali Linux but we are going to set up a lot more virtual machines later on in the course. All right. So we will be learning in this section what we will be learning in this section of the course. What is hacking? What are the phases of a penetration test? Which order are we going to learn them? So the first phase is obviously footprinting. Footprinting is the basic most important stage of a penetration test. It is basically gathering pre preliminary information or intelligence about your target like the host information about the target, uh, what operating system it is running or what ports are open on the machine and etc etc. Okay, the what ports are open on the machine doesn't come under this part. Now, scanning and enumeration. This is very similar to the first phase. Now, after reconnaissance comes, scanning is a phase where we actually gather further more details about our target as well as discovering whether our target is vulnerable to an attack. So this is uh, scanning and enumeration. So uh, in this part, we actually run scanning softwares like Nmap, which we are going to cover in great detail in the further sections of the course after we are done defining what is IDS, IPS, firewalls, honeypots, etc. and etc. So uh, we discover whether ports are open or not, and then we are going to check if a target machine is exploitable. Okay, now to the third phase of a penetration test. The third phase is exploitation. Now it is just simply gaining access because gaining access basically requires taking control of one or more devices on a network to either extract data from the target or use, use that device to then launch attacks on other targets. This last part uh, it is defined as pivoting in the real life world. So we are not going to cover pivoting in this course because it's a lot more complicated and a lot controversial to teach on YouTube. So if you want me to make a course on it or about it, just let me know. I'll make a course of it on Udemy and you can go check it out. All right. So the fourth phase of a penetration test is maintaining access. So the fourth phase, the fourth step or a phase is maintaining access or creating persistence. Persistence is uh, you uh, create a registry key for the backdoor you insert in a machine. You hack let us say it's a win it's a windows machine you create a registry key for it and you upload it into the machine when the target is done like when you're done actually gaining access to a windows machine using meterpreter which we are going to cover in detail too in the further sections of the course uh, you are going to upload that registry key so when the system restarts you usually lose access to the system so when you create the persistence uh, you create a registry key and you make the backdoor a service. So when you boot windows and open task manager, you see a lot of uh, services running, right? So we make the backdoor as a service. So whenever the system restarts or a user shuts it down and opens it after a days of use, uh, so I mean after a night and the backdoor is back up again. So you get access again to the backdoor. So create a target computer and we need to create persistence to use that target for future purposes, whatever it may be. All right, covering the tracks. 
This is the last and final step. In this step, we cover whatever we did to save ourselves from the law enforcement. This is what you uh, bad guys usually do. So we are uh, we when we are doing a penetration test, a company gives us complete access. I mean, there are three types of penetration tests: black box, gray box, and white box. So you can Google that because that's because that's very simple stuff. So bad guys cover their tracks. I'm not going to cover this in this course because YouTube has imposed a ban on instructional hacking. So we will not be covering this section. Basically, it is changing your network or move from your temporary location, which you which you used to hack into a company, and just dispose the VM you actually used to hack into the company. So uh, we are now going to actually dive in to defining the main parts of information gathering. We are going to define footprinting. So I'm going to give you guys nodes. You are going to write that in your Kali machine. So boot up your Kali machines. I just booted mine. Uh, open up your mouse pad and let's uh, dive into it. So information gathering and we are going to start making notes. Remember making notes is actually the best way to keep everything in order and you can refer to them whenever you want in the future. So uh, for the definition part I'm just going to give you guys notes. For the future lectures you are going to make notes for you to refer them in the future. All right. So information gathering is storing all available information about a specific target. So we are going to write that down. Store all available available information about a specific target. All right. So now uh, more information equals more potential weak spots and exploits. So the more information you have on a company or a website you are attacking, the more potential weak spots you can find and you can exploit them. So more information equal to more, more potential spots and exploits. Now, there are actually two types of main footprinting methods, but we are going to cover four in this course. So four main, four main footprinting methods. One, passive, passive footprinting. All right. So, uh, in passive footprinting, we gather information without actually interacting with the target we using publicly available information through search engines. So we are going to use like harvesters or we are going to use OSINT, which is open source intelligence. Uh, yeah, or just open source intelligence, which we are going to cover in the further sections because before we actually dive into hacking, we are going to need to cover all of this you need to know what is happening. So you need to gather information. So we are going to get into that uh, in the further lectures or sections. So gather information without interacting with the target itself Oop. using publicly available information through search engines. Example, OSINT work, harvesters, and we are going to use password dumps uh, the password dumps are actually not covered in the course so if you want me to make a separate course on that you can just tell me tell me about it in the comments i'll make a course about that on udemy because udemy doesn't forbid on instruction uh, 
has any bans or forbid people from teaching uh, any instructional hacking so we are going to cover password dumps if you want me to in a later udemy course which you can buy for a very cheap price password dumps and we are going to use dns dumpster and etc so we are done with passive footprinting now active active footprinting so active footprinting is collecting data with sending packets or waiting for a response that can reveal information so this is basically nmap which we are going to cover in great detail in further lectures so just stay tuned for them we are going to learn a lot guys so, and again check if you are subscribed like the video if this video reaches around maybe 10 likes and we reach 40 subscribers i'm going to make the next video all right so active footprinting is collecting data with sending packets and waiting for a response that can reveal potential vulnerable information about the target. So actually gathering with sending packets and wait for a response from the machine which can reveal some you know, potential vulnerable about the target. All right, now physical physical footprinting so uh, physical footprinting is going on to the site I mean going to the site of the company and actually physically gathering information or we can say drone reconnaissance if you own one so uh, like if you watch some Kevin Mitnick uh, security demonstrations I will link them down in the description so if you watch some Kevin Mitnick's uh, security demonstrations, they go to a uh, company and they duplicate uh, employee cards. So you can watch that uh, videos from in the description below. So I'm not going to go into further detail about that. And let's get to defining this. Actually, gathering information about target by going to the company's site of operations and whoop, give me a second there are ants all over my laptop yeah and operations site of operations and gather information or just drone recon yeah so basically drone recon now wi-fi slash network network footprinting so this basically happens uh, when a black hat is trying to break into a company so the black hat what he basically does is he will break into an employee who is working for the company so wi-fi network and then he is going to actually hack into the windows machine or whatever machine they are using then when he gets in uh, if you work for a company you know that uh, you actually need to connect to a VPN to have access to the company's network. So when uh, when a hacker break in to break in, actually breaks into a network, I'm very sorry, I'm a little stuttery today. When a hacker breaks into a network, he can actually download all your files and see what the VPN configuration files are. 
not only download your files, he can browse through, he can do whatever he wants on your computer. So uh, having a strong Wi-Fi password uh, is important and changing it every once in a while doesn't hurt. All right, so Wi-Fi and network footprinting here uh, actually break into uh, Wi-Fi network of an employee that is working for the company which is your target and gain access to their then potentially compromising the whole company. All right, uh, you can also monitor where the information comes, where the information goes and etc. We are going to learn that in the future lectures just after we define what the basic network protocols are and we learn what nmap is. So that's it for today's video guys. I hope you enjoyed this video uh, and if you if we get around 10 likes for this video and I don't care about the subscribers, just comment down below if you like my videos. That's pretty inf important. I need your guys' feedback. So in the next video, we will be looking at different information gathering methods which we can use to gather information on a potential company. So that's it for today's video guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. and.